dark and there's no way around it. We simply have to get to it somehow. We have to stand up in the darkness with our eyes wide open and move onward or forward or something. Heck, it might be in circles. We simply have to walk in the hope that the darkness will give way to light and that we will be able to see again. We know we aren't blind. We just can't see. Tough spot to be in. I always feel just a little stupid, like, like something I had something to do with the darkness somehow. Like if I had just been more, I don't know, aware or something, then perhaps the light would have never gone out. Somehow I'm still convinced that I keep lights on in my own little universe. I'm convinced that all of the darkness must be of my own doing, that I am the lowest common denominator in all the equations that make up my life. After all, it must be me, right? It has to be me. I can control this. I can fix this. Maybe I should just stay away from mathematical metaphors, which just get me in trouble. But I do have one more to offer up to you. It's a story. Several years ago, I was attending a lecture at the Lutheran Seminary in Hyde Park. The Zygon Center for Faith and Science had brought in some Nobel laureate in astrophysics to talk about redshift theory, and an Old Testament scholar to talk about Genesis. We were going to witness a conversation about the creation, or the beginning of the universe, the age of the universe. This kind of conversation brings some interesting people out of the woodwork, I mean, incredible. There were more geeks in this room than you can imagine, geeks of all stripes, math geeks, science geeks, church geeks, Hebrew language geeks, Lutheran geeks, Baptist 